Hi, Captain Dan here at Santa Barbara. Not Santa Barbara Island this time, but the city of Santa Barbara. We're on a mission to finish off the cruising guide and record the anchorages along the coast of the mainland that we've never hit before. So today, Santa Barbara and an on down the line, Refugio, Sacate, and eventually Coho anchorage. Numerous oil wells dot the area leading up to Santa Barbara. In addition to the oil wells, fog is a consideration, as are the high-speed crew boats that service these oil wells. It's a really good idea to get out your large-scale chart of the area as you approach. It's a little confusing when you get in here, but our first point of recognition is the fair water buoy. So as we close Santa Barbara, it is very difficult to see due to fog. This is a consistent condition in the summertime. The Saddleback Ridge you see in the front is uh, the giveaway. That's the city, and you can barely make out the Yacht Harbor just below it to the right. Uh, we're about two and a half miles out. We killed a little time, got closer, weather cleared up a little bit, and found the fair water buoy. Now, this is the first time I've ever seen anyone on the fair water buoy. Apparently, the Harbor Patrol giving the Coast Guard a little help with the maintenance that day. So we're heading into the anchorage at Santa Barbara, not the harbor. And the anchorage lies to the east, to the right in this picture, uh, of the wharf. And you see it's demarcated by uh, the dashed lines. We've stopped for a minute in the anchorage uh, at, outside of the harbor. The harbor is a, a different issue, but the anchorage is large, uh, normally protected from the west, and is uh, open from April to October. If you need more information about the harbor, you can call the harbor master. Uh, he will also uh, provide, uh, give you information on reservations for going into the harbor and finding a berth. As you see, this is a large open roadstead. There are uh, sewer lines and a discharge from the desalination plant. Uh, look for the buoys, which you can see out in the picture here, and stand clear. Well, we're on our way now to uh, investigate the rest of the anchorages. See you down the line. And we're off, heading west to Goleta Point and the anchorage at the University of California, Santa Barbara. The first landmark we're looking for is the Santa Barbara Light. Uh, if you've never seen it, it is not recognizable as light, so we're going to give you a view of it right here in a second, in addition to some really fabulous real estate. Okay, it'll be coming up here in a second, really close to the point, and we'll zoom in here. It is the most nondescript lighthouse in the entire country. It actually looks like a wreck, but that's where it is, and there's a, a light up in there. Take two, Goleta. <laughs> We're in Goleta Anchorage now, just a few miles west of Santa Barbara Point, between Santa Barbara Point and Goleta Point. It is a fair weather anchorage. We're in about 25 feet of water just off the pier. Uh, it would serve to be a little bit farther out if there's any kind of weather. It's a fair weather anchorage, uh, to be sure, even on a day that is really flat calm, we're rocking around quite a bit. If you try to seek shelter up against the cliffs to the west, uh, you run the danger of getting in too, too close to shore and too shallow. The landmarks here are pretty clear. Uh, UC Santa Barbara above the cliffs and the airport in the flat part here. You can see, probably see the uh, rotating antenna. And if you're coming from the west, you'll also spot the radio towers in the eastern part of the anchor. The landscape has changed a lot since Fagan uh, updated his book the last time. The only thing that was out here then was the Sloan Tower, a slim pencil ball structure. But so you see Santa Barbara has grown. One thing that's still here is the pier, which marks the eastern boundary of the anchorage. Uh, park at the uh, end of it there uh, has some recreational facilities, toilets and so forth. But Fagan advises it's a pretty rough ride in your dinghy. Get prepared to be wet.
Captain Dan here at Refugio Anchorage. Uh, Refugio is about 20 miles west of Santa Barbara. It's a fair weather anchorage and fortunately we have fair weather today. We're in uh, about 20 feet of water, a sand bottom. Fagan recommends that if it turns snotty in here, uh, get out. So we are ready for that. On the other hand, we've got two anchors down to counteract uh, the swing and uh, minimize our rolling moment. A finding refugio from the from coming from the east is is pretty easy. The refugio point sticks out, and I'll give you a picture of that in a moment. Uh, and the railroad bridge, bridge directly behind me tells you you're in the right spot. There's a campground here, and uh, you can go ashore, but the point is don't anchor right off the campground. You want to be a little bit uh, deeper water. Right now we're in about a little over 20 feet, which is uh, not very much considering we have a six foot keel. Fortunately, low tide now. We expect the tide to come up another five feet, and we'll never be lower than we are right now. Finding your way into the anchorage isn't too difficult. The chart doesn't reveal uh, just how sharp Refugio Point is, but we're going to see that here in a second in some video that we shot on the way in. What you're looking for is the railroad overpass and the, uh, the interstate overpass. They're both pretty significant. And then you'll spot the uh, campground, and about that time, you're there. Okay, so here's the point, which is really spectacular at sunset. And here's the campground. As you can see, there's not much of a swell going in there, so you can probably do that without getting wet. And some friendly campers, friendly but not great kayakers. Uh, the collisions were one every two seconds. We rely on Brian Fagan's book for uh, our base information and we explore it in update. But one thing we've noted is that Brian does not talk about the right vintage in the proper anchorage. And now we are going to go experiment with that a bit. Okay, we're rolling. Hey, hi, this is the bosun. Uh, so uh, last night we had uh, decided uh, on this anchorage to look great. Uh, our first thought was just to put one hook down, but we decided on two hooks to be on the safe side. Of course, that turned out to be a great idea. Now, after we had the two hooks down, we decided that the V&A was the perfect vintage for this anchorage. Uh, we drank a bottle of V&A, and uh, sure enough, the wind came up. We had a little bit of canyon breeze out of here, and it turned out that uh, we went for the rosé after that. And uh, the rosé print turned out to be the perfect uh, addition to that. And so uh, we actually recommend this is a, is a two bottle anchorage, a Viognier <laughs> and a rosé. You can't go wrong. In preparation for the trip, in, in addition to figuring out your vintages, uh, check out the cruising guide at sailchannelislands.com and take a close look at the Coast Pilot, which is a NOAA publication. Uh, if you can find one, get a copy of Brian Fagan's excellent cruising guide, probably available on Amazon.com. Well, have a great trip, and if you've got any questions, uh, give us a call at 805-750-7828. We'll see you on the water.